hi, hi, and hi, everyone. Uh, nope, do not adjust your set. We're back. We're on the island cam. And no, those are not little watermelons. Those are what we call, let's see if I can get my finger angled up here. There you go. Kabocha squash. K-A-B-O-C-H-A. -A, and I'm sorry, it's not uh, focusing in well because uh, my finger's moving around. There you go, you get it for a sec. And uh, we're going to do something different tonight. We are going to make stuffed kabocha squash. You know, I like country, what the hell? And so you'll see. Uh, it's not that different from uh, doing the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the uh, uh, spaghetti squash, other than the innards are more like a pumpkin. So we'll show you that in a minute. Um, <laughs> I'm going to take a minute or two to split these bad boys open, and then we're going to gut them. Uh, and uh, set them in the oven to cook. They're going to have to cook for about 45 minutes while I prep up and cook the rest of the ingredients that we're going to stuff these bad boys with. Um, and then just like we did with spaghetti squash, we'll bring it out, flip, flip them over, stuff them up, pop them back in the oven, and cook them on up. But it's something uh, I'm willing to bet probably not many of y'all have played with. So uh, we thought we'd show you something new since... Uh, we're, we're trying to, to do a couple different things. I know it's not a Super Bowl thing, but, you know, got to get back to my roots, too. And uh, felt the need to, to be a little creative tonight. So we're going to do something a little different. And uh, I promise we'll get you the Super Bowl uh, appetizer stuff back on track. I talk to you in a bit. Okay. And as you can see, once you cut them, uh, one good idea you want to do when you cut them this way, you can't cut them the other way because the bowl's just not going to be there to, to stuff stuff in and be kind of like laying, stu laying cereal on a plate, which really just doesn't work. So uh, you cut them through the, the side like that and then cut a little flat spot off on the bottom so that way when you sit them down, they've got a way to sit once you get them stuffed up. But when we're going to cook them, we're going to cook them face down like this, just like we did with the other ones. Uh, I think I can get all four of these on the same on the same cookie sheet. We'll see. So, uh, next thing to do is get these started up. Uh, we'll get them into the oven. I gotta check. It's uh, 375. We're gonna do them for uh, about 45 minutes, uh, and that'll get them cooked most of the way. You don't want them completely cooked at that point uh, because they'll end up being totally mushy. But you'll see that the innards are a little bit more like a butternut squash or a pumpkin. So it's a little bit, little bit different texture, a little bit different uh, way it's going to be this uh, this time. So we'll uh, start get started on the innards next and uh, show you that part. All right. While well, I'm waiting on the stove to heat up, <clears throat> we're going to use uh, for the stuffing tonight um, some hamburger and I'm gonna slice up some uh, celery into uh, small itty bitty little pieces. Same thing with the. Uh, Maybe carrots here because they're, uh, <laughs> they're, they're they're a little slower to cook. Uh, chop the living snot out of a red onion. Got to add the aloha. You know how that works. And uh, those of you that may or may not remember uh, the uh, interesting peppers, these are wild wonders. Uh, I told you if I found one that had the brown peppers, we're going to use one of those. So for uh, the sake of being unique and different, we're going to pop one of the, the brown peppers in there. Uh, and uh, cut that up. And then the last thing we're going to use to kind of bind it all together is uh, I'm going to get a little, flip a little minute rice and drop down in there. You can see here, yes indeed, ladies and gentlemen, do not adjust your color, do not adjust your TV sets. This is a brown pepper. So uh, they're not hot, they are sweet peppers. So there's no spice to them. That's just something a little different. So. So we get all this stuff cut up. Let me show you this one real quick here because this is a, a new and unique one you guys don't get to see a whole lot of. So I'm going to cut the top off. You can see it's got the seeds all the way down through it. Turn around here and there we go. Slice it all the way up. And you can see what we're going to have to do is, is basically gut it down the length to uh, get the seeds out of it. And you can do it by hand, or you can take a spoon, you know, whatever your preference is. Not a big deal either way. And you remove the, the seeds and the little foamy 
veins that run down it. You can see it out of there. So just like with that, we're gonna take this and, and thin cut it. So all the way down. So that way, when it cooks up and gets in there, it's a little stringer, a little something different. As we get down, uh, say we're using different sizes and everything, as we get a little farther down uh, on it, the strings get shorter. So it's going to be its own varied size and texture. Uh, it shouldn't be texture too much because it'll cook the same as everything else. So I'm just going to get it all in the frying pan going together. And let's uh, get the uh, minute rice in there to soak up all the liquid because you don't want anything really liquidy going into stuffed peppers. That just it does not work, boys and girls. Here we go. So we'll take and uh, add these in uh, to the bowl and uh, just let them sit. Uh, I'm actually going to have two bowls. I'm going to put the peppers into one um, and uh, everything else, the, the uh tougher veggies uh, into a, a different bowl, uh, start cooking the, the tougher ones, uh, and then uh, add the hamburger in because it's going to take a little bit more time to get the onion and the carrot and the celery to cook to where it's uh, not crunchy. And uh, we'll show you once we got that going. Hey guys, one other thing I forgot uh, to mention um, <clears throat> that I'm going to do this time that I, I, I did a while back is uh, we've got a couple tomatoes. Uh, I think I'm only going to use one because it's going to be a lot of tomato in there. But uh, I'm going to use some fresh tomato and dice this up pretty good uh, and add the fresh tomato in. Uh, the flavor is just fantastic when you add it in with everything. Um, and I, I think I want to do that uh, and add that maybe in place of the carrots. Um, we'll see. I'm going to give it some thought. Okay, one thing I did want to show you guys is take a look at how thin these carrots are sliced. So these are the little baby carrots. You can see I've got them mostly thin, cut real thin. Reason for this is so that they cook a little bit quicker because you don't have all that much cook time that's going on. We got about uh, 27 minutes left on the other ones. We got the uh, ground pepper and the uh, chunk tomato here. We got uh, diced up uh, red onion. And oop, there we go. Uh, there we are. Celery here. Uh, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add, I'm only going to add half. But I'm going to add half of the uh, 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 aloha pepper here so that we get some of the flavor of it. Um, I'm getting to the point where I'm a little concerned that we're going to have way too much guts to put in on this thing. Um, and don't want to, uh, don't want to overdo it. Although I have a plan uh, if in fact we do end up with too much stuff. And before the vegetarians get a hold of me and go, you know, you never do anything for vegetarians. Here's the, here's the, the, the one thing. Everything I've cut up so far has been vegetables. <clears throat> now with this, I can go through and I could cook the uh, stuffed squash with just the vegetables. So you can make a vegetarian version of this. I don't have to add the cheese. I don't have to add the, the hamburger. You can do it without. I personally am not going to, but you can do it without that way. Uh, and if we have extra left over, I got a plan for that too. I'll show you how that works in a minute. All right, I'm going to talk over this in a little bit because the frying's already going on. Uh, <clears throat> let's get your uh, hamburger in. You can see I've already added in the uh, garlic uh, over here, which is... Uh, just one nice heaping taste uh, teaspoon of the uh, garlic that we use. <clears throat> We're going to add to that some of the Italian seasoning like we did last time. A good shake on that to cover everything. We're going to add in a little uh, roasted uh, garlic and herbs on that. Not a whole lot because we don't want to overpower anything. So, a little bit back and forth on there. And I'm doing something a little different this time too. I might have a little pizza seasoning on it. Again, just a little shake on it. Not too much. You don't want to overdo it. 
So, and then you add a little pinch of salt. And my wife's going to fuss at me and says, my doctor, but you know what? Tough. So, there we go. A little pinch of the pink Himalayan. Get back to stirring this bad boy up. Oh, very shortly, you're going to add in the herbs. This is one of the times where you do want to cut the hamburger into as small pieces as possible. So, you don't want meatballs for this, you don't want big chunks because this is going into, like I said, the uh, stuffing for the squash, the kabucha, and uh, you want to make sure that you fill all the nooks and crannies that are in there, all the nooks and grannies, and yes, I said grannies, <clears throat> so chop this up, brown it up, is that specialized nor, oh, there we go, uh, beef flavor bullion, generally you find it in the uh, oh, Hispanic food aisle, not a whole lot. It's a little shake there. Shake it, shake it. Get this hamburger overboard. Back in. Five second roll. Didn't burn my fingers either. Alright, so we got that all nice and browned up. Now. We have the root veggies. Whoa! Lost a couple pieces of celery, but uh, I don't think anybody's going to cry over that. Oh, earthquake drill. Sorry about that. That was when you bump everything. So, let me get this all cooking up here. You notice there's still a good amount of hamburger compared to the veggies, part of that's because I cut the veggies up real fine. The other part of it is, believe it or not, this is the minor part of the veggies. So, we get those all stored together. Throw the cover down on it. And let it cook for about 5-10 minutes, and then we'll add the other ones. Okay, so you can see we got the uh, <clears throat> other veggies going pretty good in here. I'm going to go ahead and add in... Well, I like to call the watery or wet vegetables. So ones that don't take as long to cook. I'll add this in. See when I add this in. Now we've got a more even balanced hamburger to veggie ratio here. So I'm gonna put this in and let these bad boys cook down for a little bit here. I'm thinking I may even add a little bit. A tomato paste to that. We'll see. I'll see what I think about with that. We'll let these uh, let these cook down for a little bit. We'll see about uh, another uh, eight minutes before the uh, squash is ready. And the neat thing is, is you don't have to get squash immediately out and turn around and immediately get it set up and duck it back in. It's not it's not timed like that. Um, you get it out, let it cool off enough where you can handle it, flip it over. And that gives you a little extra time to cook this stuff and to, to make sure this is cooked up properly uh, so that you don't end up with crunchy carrots and crunchy celery. You know, everything's kind of all, it's not mushy, but it's all nice and uh, <clears throat> gentle blended together. So, And to throw a wild card in, I was thinking about it, and <clears throat> the, uh, the tomato paste is really kind of thickish for what I want for adding the uh, rice in. So I'm going to add a can of condensed tomato soup in. In place, it's a little bit thicker than uh, spaghetti sauce. <coughs> Pops in your face, which is not great. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, it's still thick enough where it's not going to make it runny. So I'll get the tomato flavor, some extra tomato flavor. And uh, <laughs> I want my face here. <coughs> Jeez, that was rude. A little extra tomato flavor as we mix it all around here. I'll put a little 
I'm going to put a little water in here in a minute to get the rice added in. You can see the water vegetables, i.e. the tomatoes and the peppers are also starting to do their thing. So again, we'll spread this out. Everybody cook up for a little bit and uh, come back for the next step. Hey, right, there we go. It's cooking away nicely. I'm going to add about uh, half a cup of water in here. Just to wet things up a little bit for the rice. Just regular old minute rice. Nothing, nothing crazy about it. Take a handful and toss it in. And take a second handful. It's hard to get a good handful when you got big ham hocks like me sticking down a little cylinder like that. So, do it this way. That's about, you know, two or three of these. And dunk it in. And that, by the time it gets done, it should soak up most of the liquid. I believe I'm going to do one more handful. Just, just to be on the safe side. I'd rather have it a little drier than soupier. that, uh, I don't know, two-thirds of a cup of rice. How about that? So, just eyeball it. It's easy enough. What you want is you want to be able to see rice with every bite, but you don't want to overpower it. So, set that down here. Set that to close. Turn it down. The important thing right now is it's everything's cooked mostly. Uh, the important thing now is to let that rice get in there and uh, soak up the water and the liquid and get that done. And in about uh, 30 seconds, we're going to be done with the uh, squash. So we'll take those out, set them up, let them uh, <clears throat> cool off. As a matter of fact, I'm going to turn this off and just let it sit there and uh, soak up. All those good vegetable and, and uh, beef juices. Um, get the get the rice going, get everything set there. <clears throat> Let that chill out for a second. Let the uh, squash chill out for a little bit. Flip those over, get them stuffed, show you how that looks, and uh, the next step. Okay, now we're over at the stove cam. Let me see if I can figure a way to do this where it's going to show everything. Uh, let's see here. I think that'll be close enough. Should be good enough for government work. How oh, true, he's still a little warm. Oh, yeah. Holy guacamole. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to have to be a little careful with this. Uh, going around. Now, let's see here. We got the uh, fixings over here. And the, uh, you can see, the rice. Dried up the liquid pretty darn well. <clears throat> Absorbed. It's a nice absorbent. So let that sit. And of course, you got to have cheese when you do this. So we've got, actually, you know what? I think I'm feeling kind of special. So I think what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to use the uh, Italian style. Um, it's mozzarella, provolone, parmesan, romano, fantina, and asiago. So yeah, we're going to get a little fancy on this tonight. Uh, this is what we're adding in. So the first thing we're going to do is woo, add some into the stuffing itself. So we'll do that and stir this in and all around. And you can tell it's thin sliced, so it's gonna stir in there pretty good and start to melt and make it stringy and all kinds of fun stuff. But one little bag is not gonna be the absolute end all be all because we're gonna 
as we do load the top of it as well. So I just want to get this stirred around with the cheese in here melted up. Oh, so it's good to go with everything. Yeah, this smells phenomenal. I wish to God we had smell-o-vision. I'm going to people come charging down the hall here after this. All right, here we go. Flip. Oh, that's hot. Flip. Oh, that's hot. Uh, flip. Oh, that's hot. Flip. Oh, that's hot. You can see. Woo. They cooked up. Hmm. Yeah, it's actually pretty tasty. Uh, they cooked up a lot like <clears throat> pumpkins do. Uh, or butternut squash. So... Uh, it's a little different, so we're just going to take here. Oh, look at all the stringers we got on there. Uh, take and start stuffing this bad boy in. Now, one thing I did not have, I wish I'd have thought to get uh, for this one, would have been some chopped spinach. That would have been phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal to add into this. But, yeah, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. so you guys try it and uh, add the spinach in and you tell me what you think. So for this, for right now, we're going to have to kind of improvise and just go without that extra little bit of veggie. Oh, sigh. What will we do? We'll marshal the hell on is what we're going to do. And I'll do this. Whoop, look at that. Oh, look at all the cheesy goodness. Oh, oh, oh. So much cheese. Uh, my doctor would not be happy with me. Too much dairy. But you know what? You got to have some fun. There you go. Stuff them bad boys. It ain't stuffed unless it's heaped. Damn it. That's what we're going to do. And we are going to have a little extra. So I think I'm going to do a little something, something else. Not for now, because this is going to be these are going to be meals in and of themselves. Once we get down to scraping them out and eating everything, but I think maybe tomorrow, 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 we'll do something tomorrow at breakfast. Tomorrow is only a night away. Yeah, no. don't give up your day job, right? Yeah. Yeah, look at all that going in there. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Uh. Oh, yeah. This is phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal. Oh, yeah. Look at that go. Okay, one. Maybe let's scoop more to give it some. Like I said, it ain't stuffed if it's flat. Mom will get a little mad at me for having to clean up her brand new baking sheet. But you know what? I think, if I'm right, and these turn out the way I hope they do, I think she'll forgive me for it. What do you guys think? Uh, this will piss you off. Go to cut it. All right, damn it. Always gonna be somebody messing with the show. Little buggers. Right, that's it. Give me a hard time. You know, my cheese hound showed up. Go figure. How they always know when there is plastic pack of cheese opening. There we go. Damn thing. Be difficult with me. Let me take it. Oh, look at that, man. Cheese out over the top. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to try and get these little stringers off here, because the last time we cooked something like this up, we ended up with stringers, and don't want to cook the plastic. Thank you very much. Last time I ended up with stringers, it was up. B-I-T-C-H to clean up the pan. So, get as few stringers as possible. And keep Misty happy. 
says, you know what, I don't want to kick in my bootay. It'll make for an interesting, uh, it might make for an interesting life. Yeah. Tonight, on Country's Kitchen, <laughs> Misty kicks his ass. these bad boys back in for another 20 minutes or so. It's going to make a little bit of a mess. I love you, honey. Don't kill me. So, there we go. Pop these back in. Wah! And we will be set. Next. Yeah, hang on. Let me... Oh, flip it out so I don't get cooked. Oh, there you go. Very carefully, take them sit down and slide them in so that they don't fall over. That would be a disaster. That's why, again, you cut the little flat parts on the on the bottom so that uh, they will stand up. All right, so we're going to let those cook for about uh, 15 minutes. That should uh, wrap everything up, and then we'll be good to go. All right, campers, here we go. The alarm has gone off. The house is full of smell. Good smell, by the way, not bad smell. And now let's see what we got. Oh, looky, looky, looky. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yes, indeed, yes, indeed. Careful, careful. A little bit more hard to keep upright than spaghetti squash. Well, look at that. Look at that, look at that, look at that. Let me turn that stove off and uh, get, a little, get a little closer with the air and extra dry here. Yeah, look at that. Oh, yeah. Look at them squashifies. Yes, indeed. Uh, I would show you, plate it up, but really all you got to do is get a spoon and scoop the insides out, leave the outside rind here. Uh, so we'll scoop everything out into, into bowls once it cools off, uh, just a smidgy. And uh, that'll be that. And it probably ain't going to be too pretty once it's uh, scooped into bowls, but ah, what the hell. So that's it. Uh, kabucha stuffed squash. There you go, folks. Something different.